Hello, welcome to Jesus for All Two. God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible, for August 28th, 2024. Happy Wednesday, everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ. Here, we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life. Our goal is to increase our faith, to please the Heavenly Father, to walk in the abundant life that our Lord and Savior died suffered and was resurrected on the cross at Calvary for us and to do the works and the greater works that our Lord and Savior said we would do in the book of John chapter 14 verse 12 most assuredly I say to you he who believes in me the works that I do he will do also and greater works than these you will do because I go to my father and oh, the book of Mark pardon me chapter 16 he gives us some of these works mark 16 15 and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned 17 and these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues 18 they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Romans 10.17 So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10, in the Amplified Version, For it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment, and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves. It is not through our own effort, but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God. Verse 9, not a result of our works, nor our attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. 10, for we are his workmanship, his own master work, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. According to John 10, 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 8 to 10. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. John four, twenty-three. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, verse 24, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. John 14, beginning at verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for 
he lives with you, where he dwells with you, and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. And verse 26, the helper. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. John 16, 13, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Amen. And those commandments are not grievous. And the Lord has it listed them in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. 38. This is the first and great commandment. 39. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. John 6, 6, 3. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And so the words of life that we shall hear today, August 28th, 2024 are Psalm 121 from the book of Job chapter 38 verse 1 through chapter 39 verse 30 and from the New Testament Revelation chapter 18 verse 1 through 24. The scriptures from the psalm and the prayer focus Psalm 34 shall be read from the New King James Version of the Bible Copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated. The Old Testament reading and the New Testament reading shall be from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Copyright 1954, 1958, 1962, 1964, 1965, 1987 by the Lockman Foundation. Used by permission, all rights reserved. I would like to thank every listener of Jesus for all too. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and that you are being given the grace by the Holy Spirit, the anointing, to walk in those promises and to do the works and the greater works that our Lord and Savior prepared for us from the foundation of the earth. For truly, brethren, we were born for just such a time as this. Imagine there's never been another person with your fingerprints from the foundation. Not Rahab, not Samuel, not Peter, not John, not Paul, not David, but you, us, individually. And we are here at such a time as this to do the works, to bring those souls, to heal those sick, to do the greater works. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us endeavor to be holy and righteous and separate ourselves that we may do those works and those greater works that God sent us to do in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for blessing and leading and giving us the grace and the strength to do what you sent us here to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For you are not a man to lie or make mistakes in your election of who you have called. And now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank every listener. I would humbly ask that you would share Jesus for all two with another, that you would subscribe, and give it the hand symbol according to your liking in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible before you is a parallel Bible published by Hendrickson, having on the left-hand side the New King James Version, on the right-hand side, the Amplified Version. The gloves are to turn the pages, and they are the colors that the Heavenly Father indicated to Moses should be used in the building of the tabernacle in the name of Jesus Christ. I do note that they are some of the same colors that the woman 
who tantalized Babylon is also wary. In the name of Jesus Christ. But the gloves are so that we keep our minds and our hearts. The focus here is only on the Word, who is God Himself, and not on any human being. Amen. I pray that there be nothing in my presentation that distracts anyone in Jesus' name from the Word Himself that we are receiving. Amen. And now, Psalm 121. The theme of Psalm 121, we can depend upon God for help. Pilgrims must travel through lonely country to their destination. They are protected, not by anything created, but by the creator of everything. Amen. And it reads, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. 5. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. 7. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forever more. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ are every of us the hearers. And now our Old Testament reading continuing with the book of J Job chapter 38 and it reads then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge Gird up now your lions like a man, and I will demand of you, and you declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare to me if you have, if you have and no understanding. 5. Who determined the measures of the earth, if you know, or who stretched the meaning, measuring line upon it? Upon what were the foundations of it fastened, or who laid its cornerstone? 7. Where the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut up the sea that with doors, with it, verse 8, Or who shut up the sea with doors when it breaks forth, and issued out of the womb? When I made the clouds the garment of it, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and marked for my appointed boundary, and set bars and doors. Verse 11, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud wave be stayed. 12, have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, so that light may get hold of the corners of the earth, and shake the wickedness of night out of it? 14, it is changed like clay into which a seal is passed. And things stand out like a many-colored garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you explored the springs of the sea, or have you walked in the recesses of the deep? 17. Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the doors of deep darkness? 18. Have you comprehended the breath of the earth? Tell me if you know it all. 19. Where is the way where light dwells? And as for darkness, where is its abode, that you may conduct it to its home, and may know the paths to its house? 21. You must know, since you were born then, or because you are so extremely old. Have you entered the treasuries of the snow, or have you seen the treasuries of the hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? 24. By what way is the light distributed, or the east wind spread over the earth? Who has prepared a channel for the torrents of rain, or a path for the thunderbolt? 26. To cause it to rain on the uninhabited land, 
and on the desert where no man lives. 27. To satisfy the waste and desolate ground, and to cause the tender grass to spring forth. Has the rain a father, or has, or who has begotten the drops of dew? Out of whose womb came the ice and the hoary frost of heaven? Who has given its birth? The waters are congealed like stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Can you bind the chains of the cluster of stars called Pleiades, or loose the cords of the constellation Orion? Can you lead forth the signs of the zodiac in this their season, or can you guide the stars of the bear with her young? Verse 33. Do you know the ordinance of the heavens? Can you establish their rule over the earth? 34. Can you lift up your face to the clouds, so that an abundance of water may cover you? Can you send lightnings, that they may go and say to you, Here we are? Who has put wisdom in the inward parts, or in the dark clouds? Or who has given understanding to the mind, or to the meteor? 37. Who can number the clouds by wisdom, or who can pour out the water? bottles of the heavens verse 30 <clears throat> verse 38 when the heat has caused the dust to run into a mass and the clods to cleave fast together can you job hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite verse 39 can you job hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they couch in their dens, or lie in wait in their hiding place. 41. Who provides for the raven its prey, when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? Chapter 39. Do you know the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth their young? Or do you observe when the hinds are giving birth? Do you attend to all this job? Verse 2. Can you number the months that they carry their offspring? Or do you know the time when they are delivered? When they bow themselves, bring forth their young ones, and cast out their pains? Their young ones become strong. They grow up in the open field. They go forth and return not to them. 5. Who has sent out the wild donkey, giving him his freedom? Or who has loosed the bands of the swift donkey by which his tame brother is bound? He the shy, the swift-footed, and the untamable, whose home I have made the wilderness, and the salt land his dwelling place. 7. He scorns the tumult of the city, and hears not the shoutings of the taskmaster. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after every green thing. Will the wild ox be willing to serve you, or remain beside your manger? Can you bind the wild ox with a harness to to the plow in the furrow, or will he harrow the furrows for you? Will you trust him, because his strength is great, or to him will you leave your labor? 12. Will you depend upon him to bring home your seed, and gather the grain of your threshing floor? Who, Job, was the author of this strange variance in the disposition of animals, so alike in appearance? Was it you? Verse 13. The wings of the ostrich wave proudly, but are they the pinions and plumage of love? The ostrich leaves her eggs on the ground and warms them in the dust, forgetting that a foot may crush them or that the wild beast may trample them. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain because she has no sense of danger for her unborn brood. 17. For God has deprived her of wisdom, neither has he imparted to her understanding. Yet when she lifts herself up in flight, so swift is she that she can laugh to scorn the horse and his rider. Have you given the horse his might? Have you closed his neck with quivering and a shaking mane? Twenty, was it you, Job, who made him to leap like a locust? The majesty of his snorting nostrils is terrible. He paws in the valley and exults in his strength. He goes out to meet the weapons of armed men. 22. He mocks at fear and is not dismayed or terrified. Neither does he turn back in battle from the sword. The quiver rattles upon him as do the glittering spear and the lance of its rider. 
24. He seems in running to devour the ground with fierceness and rage. Neither can he stand still at the sound of the war trumpet. As often as the trumpet sounds, he says, Ha! Ha! And he smells the battle from afar. The thunder of the captains and the shouting. Is it by your wisdom, Job, that the hawk soars and stretches her wings toward the south as winter approaches? Does the eagle mount up at your command and make his nest on a high, inaccessible place? On the cliff he dwells and remains securely upon the point of the rock and the stronghold. From there he spies out the prey, and his eyes see it afar off. Verse 30 and last for today. His young ones suck up blood, and where the slain are, there is he. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. How wondrous indeed are the works of God. And we are those works as well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And now the New Testament reading, continuing today in the book of Revelations with chapter 18. And it reads, Then I saw another angel descending from heaven, possessing great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his radiance and splendor. And he shouted with a mighty voice, She is fallen, mighty Babylon is fallen. She has become a resort and dwelling place for demons, a dungeon haunted by every loathsome spirit, an abode for every filthy and detestable bird. For all nations have drunk the wine of her passionate unchastity, and the rulers and leaders of the earth have joined with her in committing fornication, idolatry, and the businessmen of the earth have become rich with the wealth of her excessive luxury and wantonness. For I then heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out from her, my people, so that you may not share in her sins, neither participate in her plagues. 5. For her iniquities, her crimes and transgressions are piled up as high as heaven, and God has remembered her wickedness and her crimes and calls her up for settlement. 6. Repay to her what she herself has paid to others, and double her doom in accordance with what she has done. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she mixed for others. Verse 7. To the degree that she glorified herself and reveled in her wantonness, living deliciously and luxuriously, to that measure impose on her torment and anguish and tears and mourning. Since in her heart she boasts, I am not a widow. As a queen, on a throne I sit, and I shall never see suffering or experience sorrow. Verse 8. So shall her plagues, afflictions, calamities come back thick upon her in a single day, pestilence and anguish and sorrow and famine, and she shall be utterly consumed, burned up with fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. And the rulers and leaders of the earth who joined her in her immor immorality, idolatry, and luxuriated with her will weep and beat their breast and lament over her when they see the smoke of her conflagration. They will stand a long way off in terror of her torment, and they will cry, Woe and alas, the great city, the mighty city Babylon, in one single hour. How her doom, judgment, has overtaken you. And earth's businessmen will weep and grieve over her, because no one buys their freight, cargo, any more. Verse 12. Their merchandise is of gold, silver, precious stones, and pearls, of fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet stuffs, all kinds of scented wood, all sorts of articles of ivory, all varieties of objects of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, of cinnamon, spices, incense, ointment, and perfume, and frankincense of wine and olive oil, fine flour and wheat of cattle and sheep, horses and conveyances, and of slaves the bodies and souls of men. 14. The ripe fruits and delicacies for which your soul long have gone from you, and all your luxuries and dainties, your elegance and splendor, are lost to you, never again to be recovered 
or experienced. Fifteen, the dealers who handed these articles, who grew wealthy through their business with her, will stand a long way off, in terror of her doom and torment, weeping and grieving aloud, and saying, Alas, alas, for the great city that was robed in fine linen, in purple and scarlet, bedecked and glittering with gold, with precious stones, and with pearls, seventeen, because in one single hour all the vast wealth has been destroyed, wiped out, and all sh ship captains and pilots, navigators, and all who live by seafaring, the crews of all who ply their trade on the sea stood a long way off and exclaimed as they watched the smoke of her burning, What city could be compared to the great city? 19. And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and grieved, exclaiming, Woe and alas! For the great city where all who had ships on the sea grew rich, through her extravagance from her great wealth, in one single hour she has been destroyed and has become a desert. Rejoice, celebrate over her, O heaven, O saints, people of God, and apostles and prophets, because God has executed vengeance for you upon her. 21. Then a single powerful angel took up a boulder like a great millstone and flung it into the sea, crying, With such violence shall Babylon the great city be hurled down to destruction, and shall never again be found. And the sound of harpists and minstrels and flute flute players and trumpeters shall never again be heard in you, and no skilled artisan or any craft shall ever again be found in you, and the sound of the millstone shall never again be heard in you. 23. And never again shall the light of a lamp shine in you, and the voice of a bridegroom and bride shall never be heard in you again. For your businessmen were the great and prominent men of the earth, and by their magic spells and poison charm, poisonous charm, all nations were led astray, seduced and deluded. Verse 24 and last. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all those who have been slain, slaughtered on earth. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our every of us the hearer, as the word itself has said, will be every hearer of this word in the name of jesus christ father we pray for understanding by your spirit of this word O oh lord in the name of jesus christ and now our prayer focus psalm 34 and it reads actually today in the name of jesus christ we will read it in prayer and let us pray Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you at all times. Your praise shall continually be in our mouths. Our soul will make its boast in you, our Lord. We pray that the humble around us shall hear of it and be glad. Father, we magnify your name. Let us exalt your name together. Father, I am exalting your name this morning. Father, I am seeking you. Hear me, O Lord and deliver me out of all my fears this day in the name of Jesus Christ. I look to you and I am radiant and my face because you are my avenger and my savior and king, I am not ashamed. This poor man is crying out to you, Lord. Thank you for hearing me and saving me out of all my troubles today. Thank you that you, O Lord, the angel of the Lord are encamping all around me because I fear you Thank you for delivering me, my little ones, my brethren, my pastors, and your holy church all over the world, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for the privilege of tasting and seeing that you are good. Thank you for blessing me because I trust in you. Thank you, Father, for giving me the fear and the reverence of you, my God, that I may have wisdom. For fear of you is the beginning of wisdom. And I'm grateful, Father. And thank you, O oh Lord, for being my good shepherd, that I have no want because I fear you. 
Thank you, O oh Lord, that the young lions lack and suffer hunger. But because I seek you, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you that I lack no good thing. Not my little ones, not my pastors, not my brethren, not your holy church, in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, I am coming to you, asking that you teach me the fear of you, Father. I am the man who desires life and loves many days. Let me see good, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Not only me, but my little ones, Father, my brethren and your pastors of your holy church. Father, keep our tongues from evil by the Holy Spirit who lives within us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, put a watch over my mouth. And over my lips in the name of Jesus Christ, lock them, Father, that I speak no deceit. Give me the grace, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to depart from evil and to do good, to seek peace and pursue it, that I may be, as it says in Matthew 5, the child, the son of the God, of the Most High God. O oh Lord Jehovah, give me the grace to be a peacemaker at all times. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am asking for that grace and strength, Lord, today. In the name of Jesus Christ. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. As you say in your word. Thank you Father. That your eyes are open to my cry. And that your ears are open. Thank you Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. That your face is against those who do evil. To cut off the remembrance from the earth. Such as you have done to my enemies, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. For you are my avenger, as you said in your book of, in your word, and I am grateful. I am crying out to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. As the righteous, my righteousness coming only because of the blood of your holy son, Jesus, in whom I believe and accept, in the name of Jesus Christ. I accept that he came from heaven, died for my sins suffered and return sitting on your right side intervening for me father if there is any sin I have entered into I am confessing my sins I am not hiding them have mercy on me Lord have mercy on me and deliver me from every evil and the temptation to sin that I be in right standing with you father because of the blood of Jesus Christ Thank you, Father, for accepting my penitence over my wrongdoing. Because you are near to those who have a broken heart and are thoroughly penitent. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, your word tells me that I will have afflictions. But your word also says in the name of Jesus Christ that you deliver me out of them all. And I am grateful that today, O oh Lord, you have delivered me out of all my afflictions in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for guarding my bones, that not one of them is broken. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for slaying the wicked. And those who hate the righteous... Those who hate me, Father, let them be condemned in the name of Jesus Christ, according to your word. Thank you for redeeming my soul, because I am your servant, O Lord. And that none of those who trust in you, I am trusting in you, my Father, my Lord, my Savior, and King, shall be condemned. Thank you, Father. Let, let me today not be condemned in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. For Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.